Come to Brighthaven for happy hours of glorious sunshine. Fun, jollity, gaiety. had the foresight to oil that sign for the summer season. Oh, never mind. Tomorrow's forecast says bright sunny intervals. Yeah. Will we pop out the sun pops in? Well, you must admit it's bracing weather all right, eh? <laughs> come on, come on for a walk. What's the use? If you go against the wind, you mark time. If you go with the wind, you fall flat on your... Good. Twelve solid days you've been here, all like this. Oh, last Thursday afternoon was fine. You know, it's all your fault. If you hadn't painted such a glamorous picture of this place, I'd be basking on the beach at Juan Le Pong. Uh, it's a terrible expense. One thing I've been spared the sight of you in a bathing suit. Oh, I'll get it. A policeman's holiday. <laughs> What's up? Might hear you. What of it? Well, we want to preserve our incognito. If they found out that you were inspector, you know, well, might start something. Hello? Somebody coming in? Only Captain Fraser. Oh, dear. What about a rousing game of Ludo? Splendid. Oh, they're using the board. All right, snooker then. Table's free. Hello, everybody. Hello. Gosh, what a wind. Marvellous. Come on, long boy. There we are. <laughs> now then, Frida, how about my little tot of rum, eh? And no water. Oh, you know my habits, don't you, dear? Oh, <laughs> There's dickens of a fog in here. And I'll open the window, never mind. You'll do nothing of the sort, Captain Fraser. We're not all robust, seafaring persons. Oh, sorry, no offense, I'm sure. A little breeze never harmed anybody, you know. What are we having on it? Well, if you give me four blacks, I'll consider a halfpenny point. Well, don't you let your spirit of adventure run away with you, will you? I can't understand how you fellas stop indoors on a wonderful day like this. Here's your rum, Captain. Ah, thank you, my pet. <laughs> well, down the hatch. Cheerio. Oh. All right. Yes. I've been standing at the end of the pier getting some of this wind in my teeth. Cigarette? No, thank you. Takes me back to the good old days on shipboard, battling up to the roaring forties. Windjammer? Good heavens, no. One of his managed to destroy. Hmm. You go. Excuse me. Hmm. Where's the window, Ferris? You've got the uh, green and the yellow the wrong way round. The green goes on starboard. Yeah. Ah. Oh, well, my mistake. Oh, dear. No, no, don't. Don't waggle your elbow about like that. Keep it steady, look. No, no, let, let, let me show you, will you? Excuse me a minute. No. You want to take long, even strokes like that, see? Don't snatch at it. This is what you were doing. Follow? <laughs> I see. I see, Chess. What about making a threesome of this, eh? Much more fun, really. If you like. Well, uh, five bob a corner, what do you say? Oh, here. The snooker is not exactly my game. <laughs> oh, come, come. I've heard that story before. Now then. Go on, Bigham. <laughs> me, I'm afraid. Well, here we go. Excuse me. Bit of a fluke, I'm afraid. I hope so. Do you belong yourself, Captain Fraser? Oh, I don't know. I generally hop about from one seaside place to the other, you know. I'll, uh, I'll take the blue. A sailor home from the sea, as the poet has it. He's seldom happy if he's not in sight of them, Briney. Six. You two fellas down here together, eh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Seven. Oh. I think I can take the pink. Thirteen. Dean. Eighteen. I always think a threesome so much jolly for all concerned, don't you? Nineteen. And now I think the black. Captain Fraser. Yes, my dear. There's a call for you from Dormant, says it's urgent. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Bradfield. 
Bradfield? Yes, he's out in the lounge. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, you fellas. I'm afraid I've got to leave you. I, uh, carry on, will you? About time, too. <laughs> what do you make of the captain? What do I make of him? Oh, the man's obviously an unprincipled shark. <laughs> Five shillings a corner. <laughs> but thanks to Mr. Bradfield, I've a chance to retrieve the position. Oh. Well, if you ask me, this Bradfield man seems to be a bit of a Jonah. Do you notice how the mention of his name put phrase off his stroke? I'm pretty sure I'd mentioned it sooner. Nineteen. Excuse me. All right. Oh, Peter, get my coat, will you? I say, I, I've got to go out. I, we'll have to finish this game some other time. I, I've got to run over to Dormouth. Oh, this evening? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, there's an old friend of mine who's been taken ill rather suddenly. hope it's not serious. Well, it doesn't sound too good. It's, um, it's my old commander. Oh, he's a fine chap. Been bleeded out after the Zeebrugger show. I've, uh, I've driven over to see him once or twice. Oh, I suppose we must hope for the best. It's, uh, rather knocked me over, you know. I'll, uh, see you later. Poor chap's taken it rather badly. I wonder why. His friend wasn't too ill to speak on the phone. Hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Can you not forget your profession just for five minutes and stop behaving like a prize bloodhound? Until you could have a better holiday at Scotland Yard. So could I. A retired naval officer driving off to visit his old commander. Eh? Oh, how very sinister. Why don't you arrest him? Yeah, I thought you hadn't noticed anything. Well, I noticed he had the good sense to be enjoying his holiday. Do you remember when he changed the yellow for the green? I'm just not interested. Now, I'm the sort of bloke who's seasick when he looks at the serpentine. But I know the difference between port and starboard, and Captain Fraser, later the Royal Navy, does not. Oh, dinner. gentleman of the name of Captain Edwin Fraser staying here? That's right. And he's gone to Dormouth. He'll be back late tonight. I'm afraid he won't. We just found his body at the bottom of Blackham Cliff. Captain Fraser? You mean he's... Now they know his stilics. Keep your head. Oh! Captain, Captain Fraser's body's been found dead at the bottom of Blackham Cliff. It's true, he's dead. There's a sleep No, no, no. There's no need to get excited. It is true. It is. Nasty accident. Went clean over the cliff in his car. Oh, oh yeah. And he always said he wanted to die at sea. Oh. He nearly did, but the tide was out. I think I'm going to faint. Oh, no, no, no. Frida, smell his there. Any collection of Captain Fraser present? No, he was staying alone. Then I must ask one of you people to come along with me and identify the body. Oh, no. It won't be a pleasant job. Poor fellow. Oh, well, it's, it's no business of ours. You must have known him. Oh, no, I couldn't. Really, I couldn't. It's got to be somebody. Now, who spoke to him last? Uh, those two gentlemen. That's right. Those two gentlemen were playing billiards with him. And deny everything. Is what this young lady says correct? Beg your pardon? That's quite correct, Sergeant. Ah. Are you two gentlemen willing to identify the body? Well, if you want us to. Then I must ask you to come with me to the station. I'll get you that some help. Um, much as I dislike it, officer. I think I should tell you, Captain Fraser consumed a large run before leaving. Shh. Uh, thank you, madam. We shall probably call on you later. Ready, you two? Come on. Well, I might as well tell you, it won't be a pretty sight. Ever seen a corpse before? One or two? He's seen dozens, so have I. Undertakers, eh? <laughs> That's right, undertakers. Well, play your cards right and you might get the job. Splendid. Hear that, Bingham? Uh-huh. He must have shot clean past the loopway turn and through the barrier. 
I suppose he couldn't stop, sir, or lost his head. Mm, yes. Tricky place just there, isn't it? A bit. The cliff road's been closed for a month now, sir. We've had no complaints reported. Very anyway, well. That's all now. Bring in that young couple. Very good, sir. Are they satisfied? Yes, it's Captain Fraser, all right. Mm, what the fire left of them? Same height, bill, shape of head. Anchor tatted yes, on back yes. of left hand. Couldn't answer for face in view of absence of same. Hmm. Recognize this? Yes, it's Captain Fraser's cigarette case. That's it, all right. Thank you. I'll have to sign a statement. Very good, sir. Did you find his dog? Dog? Yeah. The one that was on the end of this chain. Wire hair terrier, gent. Answers to the name of Jellico. He took it with him. We didn't see any dog. Maybe he jumped out before the crash. You know, <laughs> dogs are sometimes more intelligent than human beings. <laughs> Some human beings. Over here, please. Formal statement of identification. Please read carefully and sign below. Any private and business address, if any. Telephone number, if any. And occupation, if any. Come along, please. Come on, come on. I understand you witnessed the accident. He did. That's right. Very well. What happened? Alfred took me for a ride up to Blackcomb Cliff, didn't you, Alfred? And you saw it from your car? No. We're courting and... What's that got to do with it? Well, it's only a baby, Austin. Where were you then? In the pine woods. I do hope our names won't come out. Alfred's family wouldn't like it at all. Would you be good enough to tell me what took place? You mean... Oh, about the accident? Naturally. Oh, well, about half past eight, we heard a sort of smashing noise from the cliff road, and Alfred looked round and saw that the dead gentleman's car had just broken through the barrier, didn't you, Alfred? That's right, yes. Went straight on and slapped over the edge of the cliff. You didn't notice a dog in the car, I suppose? I couldn't see. Alfred was in the way. How fast was the car going? 60 or 70, I suppose. Oh, no, about 30. 30? At the outside. No, I call that highly significant. After they saw anyone else in the neighborhood. Another car, for instance. Are you conducting this inquiry, or am I? Well, Funny, we didn't see another car, but we heard one, didn't we, Alfred? That's right. We heard it ticking over, very faint, down below. Thought well, they were doing the same as us, didn't we, Alfred? That's right. Hmm. Do you remember anything else? Except after the accident, when I went to look over the edge of the cliff, I heard the other car drive off down the loopway. Really? Oh, oh I'm, I'm awfully sorry. Have these persons signed their statement? Yes. Uh, well, I haven't actually signed my own. Can we go now? Yes. Right. You're going to address it to the officer in the hall. Oh, I do hope our names won't come out. Alfred's family wouldn't like it at all. He's got a wife and three children. That's right. Seems to be a perfectly straightforward accident case, Sergeant. Yes, sir. He's taken quite a bit of a rubber board, I understand. Yes, I probably explained it. Have you ever tried doing a fine cut into the middle pocket when you're south? I beg your pardon? Let it pass. I've often noticed that members of the public have a passion for amateur theorizing. Good night. Take my advice, leave us to do the printing down. You stick the screwing them down. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite right, Sergeant. Good night. 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 James. Detective Inspector, Metropolitan Police. Eh? You Scotland Yard. Hi! Hi! Inspector! Ah, I thought so. You're Inspector Hornley. That's right, sir. Well, I've often heard of you, of course. Mm. I must apologize. Why didn't you tell me? Well, as a matter of fact, sir, we're traveling in Cogito. We're on holiday. You mean we're where on holiday? Oh, this is Sergeant Bingham. Sergeant? It says here, occupation undertaker. Oh, we undertake investigations. Come along in, Inspector. I'm sorry this is happening. Why don't you sit down? Thank you. Get Sergeant Bingham a chair, will you? Yes, sir. Hold this a minute, will you? And you have a cigar? Oh, thank you very much. I take it that you're not satisfied about this accident, uh, Inspector. Well, I'm satisfied it wasn't an accident. Why? Why didn't he break? He's only doing 30. Suicide. Oh, so that's it. Oh, well, why don't you study psychology, Inspector? Here we have a fine, hearty young naval officer rushing off to the bedside of his old commander. Now, why should he suddenly decide to commit suicide, eh? <laughs> it was an accident. He was not a naval officer. He was not hurrying. His old commander does not exist. It wasn't a suicide and it wasn't an accident. Otherwise, quite correct. What's this? How can you say that? Why, the man reeked of the sea. I'll eat this cigar if he ever told the decks of anything more than a penny steamer. Why, I didn't even know the difference between port and starboard. Mm, sounds like a confidence man. Now, what do we know? Firstly, he receives a highly upsetting phone call. 
comma, Mr. Bradfield of Dormouth. I'll lay ten to one his name isn't in the directory. Check that, Sergeant. Bradfield, Dormouth. Yes, sir. He then leaves in his car with the dog on a leaf. We know there's another car waiting at Blackcomb Cliff. A bit later, Fraser's car goes over the edge, whereupon the other car drives off. Right? Correct. We also know that the dog wasn't in the car when it crashed on the beach. I see what you mean. Fraser let the dog off the lead. Which shows that he must have stopped first, presumably to talk to whoever was in that other car. And if you ask me, it finished with Fraser being knocked on the head, shoved back in his car, which was set going for the beach, and then, plonk. Murder. Murder. Made to look like an accident. Only they forgot the dog. No Bradfield in the directory on the Dormouth exchange, sir. Well, that confirms what you said. Murder. So well. Now that we're put you in the right line, sir, <laughs> we'll resume our holiday. <laughs> Coming, Inspector. But you can't go through with this, you know. Oh, quite impossible, sir. I mean, quite apart from being in holiday, the superintendent would never hear of it. <laughs> would he? Appears to me to be a job for the yard. However, if you're not free... Well, I can't stop you making a request, can I, sir? Even if we are off duty, so to speak. Let me Whitehall 1212. You did that on purpose. You've deliberately ruined our holiday. That's right. Chalk ices. Send them up for the maid right away, will you? She'll pay you. Oh, gosh, it's going to be the hottest day of the year. Have I found something? Nothing much, sir. Mostly bills. A couple of letters from a Mrs. Bracer. And who's that? His lady friend? Hardly, sir. She calls him dear Mr. Edwin and hopes his indigestion is better. <laughs> Sounds like an old retainer. Well, they won't be troubled much with indigestion now. No mention of any family or anything. It looks as if he was alone in the world. <laughs> the way these solicitors charge is dear later, Aubrey. Listen to this. To attend in court three your dog Jellico biting postman. Three guineas. Fine, seven and six. <laughs> Think of it, three pounds, ten and six for biting a postman. It's out of all proportion. Here's another thing. To drawing up will in accordance with instructions, five guineas. Five guineas? <laughs> I made my will myself. <laughs> There's nothing in it. Then why make it? Here, let me have a look at that. Mrs. Strachey and Sons. Strachey, Strachey. Solicitor Strand. Looks as if he expected something to happen, making a will. Yeah, but this will was made two years ago. Well, that doesn't get us very far, does it? No, I'm afraid not. You're right, sir. Thanks. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Chalk ice, Chief. No, thank you. Eh? Hey? No, thank you. Go on, put him down, put him down. Chalk ice is at a time like this. Talk about fiddling while Rome's burning. I wish we could get a line on Bradfield, whoever he might be. Well, if he's got any sense, he'll have opted out the district by now. Hello, hello, here's something. Fraser paid the worldwide insurance company £754 premium on February the 2nd. But if that's a life insurance policy, they might make him a subject for murder. How do you make that out? Well, if you were insured for a fat sum and left it to me, I wouldn't mind turning over the proposition myself. Aye, George. There's motive enough there for anybody. Yes. What do you propose to do, Inspector? Sit tight and let the coroner return an open verdict. We don't want to scare off the beneficiaries. I'd like to be present at the reading of that will. Straight you in, son? Yes. What is it? Well, it says here that they're reading the old captain's will today. Do you mean the late Captain Edwin Fraser's? R.I.P. Yeah, that's the idea. So they've just begun. Are you one of the beneficiaries? Well, uh, I have expectations. This way. What name is it? Spetchett. Albert Montague Spetchett. All right. Been my intention. <clears throat> and now we come to the matter of the bequest. Mrs. Patchett. Good afternoon, all. Uh, I don't think I'm acquainted with the name. 
Are you a relative, sir? Well, strictly speaking, no. But there's nothing closer than the brotherhood of the sea, you know? Yes. Many of the game are with it with me, old captain. R.I.P. And seeing the announcement in the paper. Well, go on, go ahead, Governor. As I was saying, we now come to the matter of the bequests. Oh. Having remained a bachelor who has spent the greater part of his life in different quarters of the globe, I have neither ties nor dependents. This being so, I have taken out a life insurance endowment policy to mature in 20 years from the present date. And that is, of course, two years ago. Sure, sure, sure. In the event of my decease before that time, it is my wish that the full sum assured, namely £20,000, should revert to my old nurse and sometime housekeeper, Mrs. Adeline Bracer whose services I remember with gratitude and affection. What? Me? That is so, Mrs. Bracer. Twenty thousand pounds? It must be a mistake. I should think so. There is no mistake, Miss Meadows. Gratitude and affection. Oh, oh poor Mr. <laughs> I simply can't understand it. My uncle always led me to believe that I was the sole beneficiary. I have not finished yet, Miss Meadow. I also bequeath to Mrs. Bracer the residue of my personal estate after all claims and duties have been met. Uh, I may say that the final sum in this case would be very modest indeed. But this is really quite absurd. After all, I'm the only relative you've got. There is still more to come, Miss Meadows. To my third cousin, Angela Meadows, I bequeath my car and my dog, Jellicoe, with the earnest request that you will provide a good home for the latter. Really? This is too humiliating for words. Well, go on, Governor, go on. That is all. What? Do you mean to say I'm not mentioned? I do. But the captain swore on his sacred oath that he wouldn't forgive me when he was called up aloft. I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Spatchett, but there it is. What do you think of that? Served him like a dog, I did. Looked after him like a blinky wet nurse. Here, what about his telescope and compasses? The captain mentioned most particular they was to come to me. I have no knowledge of the matter. Oh, you haven't, have you? Come on, now, what have you done with them? Give them to your little boy, I suppose. I am unmarried. You'd better be careful what you say. Served him like a dog. And what do I get for it? Nothing. Not a sausage. There's gratitude for you. The proceedings are closed. Will you show Miss Meadows and Mr. Spatchett the way out, please, Tompkins? I do not intend to let the matter rest here, Mr. Strachey. I shall see my solicitors at once and have the will contested. And so shall I. Hello. I didn't expect you back just yet. Had a good time in the West End. Not bad at all, Mrs. Moody. Any customers? Half a dozen, I should think. There's been quite a run on the ant's eggs. It's all down in the book, and the money's in the drawer. It is a nuisance. I couldn't get the right material for the parlour curtains. I suppose you couldn't manage to come and keep shop again tomorrow morning for a bit while I have another look round? Of course I will. Gives me a chance to sit down. I'd sooner look at a goldfish any day than listen to my husband on the international situation. Thanks ever so, Mrs. Mooney. Oh, don't mean. About the devil. Right. See you tomorrow, dear. <laughs> Oh, somebody phoned up. Oh? Who was it? Dunno. She said, would you bring him back when you came home? Uh, the, the number's on the desk next to the brush and carp. Bye-bye. Hello. I'm here, Ma. I'll bring you later. Yeah, nice little business you got here. Yeah, I'm very poor for a fish myself. Fried preferred. Oh. What do you want? Nothing, nothing at all. I just come down here in a pure spirit of Christian goodwill to offer you my hearty congratulations. I suppose you followed me. Nothing of the sort. I looked you up in the telephone book. Why? Why? Because any friend of the captain's a friend of mine, in spite of the heart-rending way he treated me. 
If you come here to Cadge, I warn you, you won't get a cent. Now, look here, Ma. If the thought of money ever entered my head, may I be struck down this very second. Mind you, you're quite right to be careful. Do you sell goldfish, madam? What are these, Aunt Carrots? Huh? I want a bowl of little ones for my nipper's birthday, you know, a small bowl. We make up a nice one for three and six. Oh. I advise you to go before I send for Mr. Strachey. You come this way, Hello? Is that Cromwell 3215? Yes. Who's that speaking? Uh, this is the butler. No. What is it? 
Supposing I were to tell you that Mr. Bradfield gave me this number to telephone. Mr. Mr. Bradfield? Mean anything to you? It certainly does. All right. Well, you can cut that buffalo stuff. Okay, buddy, but you know, you, you can't be too careful in our kind of work. Do they do it? <laughs> Say, maybe it's the bad line, but I don't seem to recognize your voice. <laughs> Who is it? I don't suppose you've ever heard Mr. Bradfield mention Charlie? Charlie? Oh, so you're Charlie. Huh. Have you heard of me? Oh, why, of course you bet. What a lucky shot. <clears throat> Is Mr. Bradfield there now? No. Why? Did he, did he say he would be? Oh, no, 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 but um, I haven't seen him since the last job. You mean about Captain Fraser? Shh. I didn't know you were in on that, Charlie. Oh, up to the neck. Now listen, I've got to speak to Bradfield. It's urgent. Do you know where he is? Why, of course, but I can't tell you over the phone. No, 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 but this, this can't wait. Do you happen to know of a pub called the Hero of Inkerman at the corner of Waterloo Street? You bet. Can you meet me there tonight at 8 o'clock? Okay, Charlie. Who do I ask for? Joe. Spider Joe. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Spider. Hero of Inkerman, eight. Spider Joe. Ha <laughs> ha. How's that, eh? <laughs> Good work, sir. We trace the Cromwell number, sir. The address is 153A Cromwell Avenue. Thank you. 153A Cromwell Avenue. Hello. Well, just a minute. Sergeant Bingham, sir. Right. We'll see what he's got to report. Only speaking. Inspector, I've just seen Captain Fraser. What? Walking down the street with his dog. Ah, fancy that. But it's a fact. I followed the Meadows girl to a house here. She'd just gone inside when the captain walks up as large as life and goes into the same house. And what did the dog say? Huh? You don't believe me? Of course I don't. Oh, but I saw him with my own eyes, Inspector. If it wasn't Fraser, it was his twin brother. Why, I'm telephoning you now from the same house. And where was that? 153A Cromwell Avenue. What's that? Ah, yeah, listen. There's something very peculiar going on here. Ah. It looks as like if you stole the march on me, doesn't it, Sergeant? Eh? Well, yes. It does, doesn't it, Inspector? Well, you haven't. I know all about that house. Eh? Yes, it's used by the people who killed Fraser, including Bradfield. That's right. Uh, one of them just rang up. The crook, if ever there was one. Yeah, so is that butler fella. You better be careful of him. Butler? No butler here. What do you mean? I was talking to myself a couple of minutes ago. But you couldn't have been. Why not? Because I was talking myself to that crook. The... So you're Spider Joe. You're Charlie. You bald-headed, spindle-shag, haggis-witted, toffee brain. Now, wait a minute, Inspector. You made the very same mistake yourself. I don't have any subordination from you. You ain't there like I'm round. What about Captain Fraser? Disbelieve in heaven? What do you think I am? An idiot? Well, I know what I saw, don't I? I have to mind to tell him what I think of him. Mustn't lose my temper. Casual and nonchalant. You don't believe me, Inspector? <laughs> well, maybe you're right, but uh, I just want you to convince me, that's all. <laughs> that's better. Put the onus on him. That's clever. Cigarette, Inspector? No, maybe not. May take one. Won't you sit down, Inspector? <laughs> no, listen, Inspector. Just leaving Fraser out of the question for the minute. Don't.
Chelsea Bridge. This is the place? Yes. And I was right about Captain Fraser. He's in here now. Go on. So he's popped up again? He's dead in the drawing room. But I thought you said he was alive. Yes, but he's dead again now. Well, I wish you'd make up your mind. Go on. He's in here. Look! I see. First of all, he chucks himself over a 200-foot cliff and roasts himself alive. Then he falls back to life again, decides he doesn't like it, kicks the bucket a second time, and turns himself into a prize person. He was there when I came out. I swear he was. He spoke to me. But just now he was dead. Yes. He spoke, and then he died. What did he say? Chelsea Bridge. Chelsea Bridge. Chelsea Bridge. <laughs> but it's true. I can prove it. There's something he tried to give me. I've got it here. That's all right, old man. Take it easy, take it easy. Go on. Lost it. All right, all right. We'll find it. Oh, but I tell you, he got upset Chelsea Bridge and fell flat. Well, of course he did. Nothing unnatural is that, is there? Nothing at all, sir. No, just what we'd say. <laughs> Here it is. What? <laughs> Fraser dropped it. I told you. He tried to give it to me. Oh. You better take a look around. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that probably belongs to the murderer. I've placed a vital clue in your hands, Inspector. Here, yeah, let me get this straight. You say you followed the Meadows girl here. Yes. And Fraser came along and you went in after him. Yes. And there was no sign of anyone until you found Fraser dead. I knocked in the head. Hmm. He must have been attacked as soon as he got inside. You're sure it was, Fraser? Of course, I'm sure. He had that same anchor mark in his hand. Hey, but how do I know you haven't imagined it? That you haven't cooked up this bit of evidence? I wouldn't put it past you. I have not. I found him upstairs, Inspector. Oh, it's Jellico. Could I cook him up? Anything else? No, sir, nothing. No one downstairs, sir. Kitchen windows open. There are tire marks just outside in mules. Of course. Whoever it was took Fraser's body through the back to a car. While you were taking the air in the front. Why the blazing to stick inside? Suppose you'd like to find me stretched stiff and cold in that carpet. Yeah, don't put ideas into my head. Chelsea Bridge, Chelsea. I believe I've got it. Hmm? Suppose you Fraser overheard them say that they were going to drop his body over it. I tried to tell you. How about that? It's possible. Right. Well, now you go and keep a watch on Chelsea Bridge. But now? Yeah, until further orders. Go on, hop it. Go on, go on. Now what about these car marks? Chelsea Bridge. You went over Black and Cliff. Who's the Dickens, was it? Somebody else, sir. What we used to call us cool X, the unknown quantity. Fraser's friends wait for him on the cliff road with a body of X. Fraser changes his clothes with it. They spray the car with petrol, put X in it, and send it over the cliff. And Fraser rides off with his friends and Jellico. Fraser was insured for 20,000 pounds. And his relatives couldn't collect unless they got a body to show for it. Gosh. Yeah, we're under the nastiest and the neatest case of murder I've ever struck. Yes, I suppose. Pop it, Jellico. I suppose I can take it that Fraser really is dead now. Oh, I think so, sir. Mm. 
I will help you to lie down this time. But if he was a member of the gang, why should they have killed him? Oh, I suppose, well, to double cross his boss, Bradfield, whoever he is. Wait a minute. Supposing Miss Meadows is Bradfield? Couldn't be, sir. She couldn't have shifted Fraser's body alone. And don't forget Mrs. Bracer was given that Cromwell number to phone. Presumably to talk to the boss. Hello? Oh, good. Bring him up. It's a chap from the Institute of Heraldry, sir. I asked him to check up on that signature ring place I dropped. Yeah. Mr. Griegel, sir. Ah, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Come in, Mr. Griegel. Uh, Inspector Hornley, I presume? That's right. Now I'll bring you a chair. Oh, thank you. There you are. Now, did you have any luck? Uh, since heraldry is an exact science, luck can hardly be said to enter into it. However, uh, my researches have met with some slight success. Good. Did you find out who the ring belongs to? All in good time, Inspector. Mm. I have here a coloured plate of the coat of arms you will have observed on this ring. In simple, non-technical language, it consists of... Um, uh, quarterly, uh, first argent, uh, three stags proper, a uh, tripping. Quite. Uh, second, uh, gules, a portcullis. Overall, a baton sinister, argent, uh, often erroneously referred to as a bar sinister, uh, denoting an illegitimate descent. Uh, you follow, of course. Yeah, the wrong side of the blanket. <coughs> uh, third, or. Uh, five uh, ogresses uh, or uh, pellets in uh, uh, salt time. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes. On investigation, I found that the arms are those of the Stone Wallace family. Good. Where can I get them? All in good time, Inspector. <coughs> Turning to Debrett, <coughs> we find uh, here an entry under Stone Wallace. I take it you are not concerned with the derivation of the name itself? Not passionately. Ah, oh, pity. It has points of interest. Hmm. Uh, however, uh, the sole surviving member of the family would appear to be um, Richard Anstruther Stone Wallace, born 1893. He is now resident at um, Five Oaks, uh, near St Albans, Herefordshire. Good. Splendid. Five Oaks, St Albans. Thank you very much, Mr. Griggle. That's uh, just what I wanted. Excuse yes, me, sir. There's no time to lose. Stone Wallace may be the man we want. Mm -hmm. Good luck, Inspector. Thank you. Hello. Where have you been? Chelsea Bridge. What? All night. Bless my soul, I've all about you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. But what happened? For twelve solid hours, nothing. Then an old lady gave me a penny. <laughs> so disgusted at half a mind to throw it over the bridge. Well, can I go home now and have my pneumonia in peace? Yes, when we get back from St. Albans. St. Albans? <laughs> I'm not a wink of sleep. Well, I'm sorry about that. Nevertheless, we're going to catch an omnibus, Bert, after a Bradfield rampant and no stopping at any bar of sinisters. Come on. <laughs> nice little place. Yeah, 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 wake yeah. up. <sighs> you know, that's the third time you've dropped off. You better pull yourself together. We may be meeting the murderer. That is, if he's at home. Hello? Two pounds, babe, two pounds. Three pounds on two pounds. Three pounds. Four, 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 four. Can I help you, sir? Well, I wanted to speak to Mr. Stone Wallace on a matter of business. Don't you, sir? What? Mr. Stone Wallace died three weeks ago. Died? Yes, sir. Can I do anything? I was his butler. No, I'm afraid not. But when was the funeral? 16th, sir. What here? Down in the village, at the parish church. Ah. Oh, by the way, you're an ex-service man, aren't you? Yes, sir. Marines. I was Mr. Stone Wallace's servant when he was in the Navy. Oh, thank you very much. Come on, come on. Uh, it's as plain as a pike style. We found X. It was Stone Wallace's body they sent over the trip instead of Fraser's. Eh? How can you prove it? Easy. Tonight, you and I are going to play Hamlet, Act 5, Scene 1. Have we time to fool about like that? The gravedigger seen you ignoramus. Excuse me, sir.
no bound. We shouldn't be doing this without an exclamation order from the Home Office. Well, I retired in 1950. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Hey, Fever? No, Chelsea Bridge. Richard Anstruther died three weeks ago. That's the one we want. This might be it. Richard Anstruther Stone Wallace. That's our boy. Come on, lights. cheese and pickles. Coming. Coming. What do you expect uh, to find? Nothing. A whole coffin full of it. Come on up to go. Bless my soul. Captain Fraser. He's popped up again. where we started. Anyway, we've seen the last of Fraser. That's worth a couple of years' pension. I wonder why they bothered to put his corpse into somebody else's coffin. Now, look, if I ever murdered you, which becomes increasingly likely, mm -hmm. the snag would be getting rid of your body, so-called. And if I knew of a nice vacant coffin, why, well, I'd jump at it. Vulgar abuse doesn't alter the fact that we're no further forward. Of course we are. We now know that Stone Wallace wasn't murdered. They just snatched his body and sent it over the cliff instead of Fraser's. Yes, but who planned it and who killed Fraser? Bradfield. And who's Bradfield? Search me. <laughs> there you are, then. You see, just what I said. We haven't advanced an inch. Wait a minute. There's one thing we've forgotten. That comic clue of yours. Chelsea Bridge. <laughs> you can watch it yourself this time. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, I was wrong then. Still, it must have meant something. How did you say it? Hmm? Just sort of... Opened his mouth and said it. Yes, well, come on, now show me. Yeah. Well, you sort of sit and like this. <laughs> What's the matter? I feel sort of silly. Come on, now, get on with it. Well, you sort of sit and like this, see? And then he uh, opened his eyes and he struggled up. Yeah, it must have been a horrible sight. Hmm. And he. <laughs> tickets, please. <laughs> Go on, give me the tickets. Don't sit there in a tub. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's have the second house. He might come back. Come on, come on, don't be coy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Really? Struggled up, the way I showed you. And then he sort of pointed at me and said, Chelsea, Brady, and... Uh, dead. And what? That's all. But did he say Chelsea, Bridge and? Did I say and? Yes. Then he must have said and. But he didn't finish it. He must have died before he could get it out. It might have been and anything. And all station south. And the same to you. Doesn't make sense. What doesn't? Chelsea Bridge and the same to you. Ooh. Chillingworth, Chelmick, Chelsea Art Stores, Chelsea Barracks, Chelsea... Aha. Uh -huh. Chelsea Bridge and Social Club. Bridge? I wonder. 
Bridge Club doesn't sound very ominous to me. Let's go. The Bridge Club's under here. Hello, hello. This is station GCG43, calling all enthusiastic amateurs. Station CG43, now testing. I'm going to put on a few gramophone records. This is one of these daft wireless amateurs. That window. Hmm? Uh -huh. Take a dig up through it. <laughs> Can't reach. Go oh, bend over, I'll hold your feet. Oh, not me. Why don't you do it? Oh, the police force can't afford to lose me. Can't afford to. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. come on. No insubordination, come on. I can't stand heights. Oh, God, it's all right. I'll look after you. Now bend down. How can I touch you? That's all right, yes. I think it is, easy. Let this old go. And I'll I'll hold it. Yes, I can hold it. Yeah. And I'll pay you out inch by inch. I'm getting giddy. Go on, go on, now go on. On you go. I've got you. Yes, you have. I've got you. Go on, go on. I've got you. But don't go too far. <laughs> can you see anything? It's a bridge club, all right. There are folk playing cards. Oh, now let me up for pity's sake. Anyone we know? There's that wireless chap. Just going out. No, I mean, just coming in. It's all very confusing. They're all upside down. Oh! What's up? I've dropped two and seven from seat, me. Well, never mind. You're charging the expenses sheet. <laughs> What's happening now? There seems to be a bit of an argument. You will return to Cromer tomorrow, and you will hear from us when your turn comes. Well, supposing I refuse to go on with it. Isn't that a little difficult? Well, I didn't know I was going to work for a murderer. Well, that's what Bradfield is, isn't he? You think I can't guess? You'd better be careful. Well, you're the only one who knows who he is. Why should we work for a man we've never even seen? Because you're well paid for it. And because you can't afford not to. It's Mrs. Breton. And the Meadows girl. Good. We struck oil. And the Meadows girl seen something. What? You think I'm a lip reader as well as a trapeze artist? What's happening now? Well, whatever the argument was about, the Meadows girl has won. Oh, now, can I come up now? Please, Inspector. All right, All right come on in. Oh, God. Oh, All right, I've got you. Wait a minute, I want to spit on my hands. Oh. <sighs> Never did that again. I'd hand in my resignation if I didn't know you'd jump it to. That's right. Nothing with dead. Yes. It looks as if Fraser was only one cog in a very big wheel. Well, there's only one thing to do. Read the place. What we want is Bradfield. Two and seven foot here, hop down to the police box and phone that through to the super. It's urgent. Go on, I'll back up. I'll meet you around the corner in a couple of minutes. You might send this through to the box when he comes down. Right. Are you on the air yet, UX 74? UX 74. If so, please call me. Over. Hello, CG43. Here I am. You're coming over at good strength. How have you been getting on since our last talk? I suppose you've been busy in the garden today. Over. That's right. Some of the family are a bit worried over that medlar tree you cut back for us last week. The roots seem to be affecting the shrub from the Cromer nurseries. Over. I'll try and pick up the reply. There is no need to worry about the chroma shrub. If necessary, we can transplant it. Can you tell where it's coming from? Give us a chance, sir. Try and do yourself, Jim. OK, George. The medlar tree needed drastic treatment, but you will find the garden will be all the better for it. 
Is there any sign of blight in your district? Over. You're sure you're in the right station? <laughs> Sounds like Mr. Middleton to me. It's Bedfield. The family's the gang. The garden's the record and the trees are the separate members. The middle that was cut back was Captain Fraser. Oh, I see. But what's the blight? A shuffle. The police. Police for a bit, Jim. Quick as you can. All right. I may not be able to carry out another experiment for some time. It's quite near now, sir. Less than a mile, I should say. Good, good. South now, Jim. As you know, it's a delicate operation, and one can only graft onto a similar species. Not more than half a mile now. It is unlikely, therefore, that you will hear from me for another month or so. No, but you'll hear from us if you only keep on talking. I don't think there's anything else. Eh? Hey? Oh, here, come on, think of something. No, that seems to be all. So goodbye for the present. Oh, what luck. Leads up the garden and then nips us in the blinking bud. Turco, what's number three? Balloon Barrage Supply Depot. Four? Raytox Dog Biscuit Factory. Balloons and dog biscuits. You're wasting your time, Inspector. Look, why not arrest the others? One of them certain to squeal. Well, how can they squeal if they don't know? Six? Queen Anne's Hospital. What's the use? Wait a minute. Who are you going to call? Get me St. Albans 322. Who are you calling? You'll see. Hello? Is that the late Mr. Stone Wallace's butler? This is Inspector Hawley, Metropolitan Police, and I'm making certain inquiries. I understand that Mr. Stone Wallace had a long illness. Did he die at home? Ah, thank you very much. That'll do. Stone Wallace was removed to a private ward in Queen Anne's Hospital, where he died six weeks later. Queen Anne's? So that's where Bradfield's playing his game? Yes, square number six. Ask Dr. MacDonald to come along, will you? Yes, sir. I believe I've got it. This record is worked in the hospital. Bradfield sends out a message whenever he spots a dying patient who resembles a member of the gang. When Stone Wallace entered the hospital, he warned Captain Fraser, a member of the same height, build, age, and told him to get ready for the changeover. Oh, the yeah, but that, that could work once, but it's a chancy thing to try and run in a system. Oh, that's where the doctor can help us. Officer's inspector? I wanted to ask you something, doctor. Yeah. Do you know Queen Anne's Hospital? Yes, I walked it 15 years ago. How many patients pass through there a year? Oh, let me see. There used to be 850 beds in my time. There are probably more now. Say, 15,000 patients. And the mortality rate? The average is about 5%. Ah, that will be, what, um, 750 deaths a year? Mm -hmm. Righto, thank you, Doctor. Thank oh, you very much. That's OK. Now, let me think. 750 dead bodies against a dozen stooges. That would mean that Bradfield could work his racket about three or four times a year. And at 20,000 apiece? Gosh, my that's ingenious. That's 80,000 a year. Yeah, not bad, is it? <laughs> How did you find out? Now, while you've been wasting your time, I've been busy. See these? Huh? Candy camera placed outside the bridge club. Now, this one's the shrub from Cromer, unless I'm mistaken. Insured with a good citizen company for 15,000 pounds. Runs a small yacht. You can guess the rest. You'll drown. Yeah. Boat sinks, body supplied by Queen Anne, washed up later, battered out of all recognition, identified as his, and so on. Each member supplied with a different background, waiting till the body turns up more or less like them. See, so we still don't know who Bradfield is. We only know that he's somewhere in that hospital, and that he won't move again until the right patient dies. Mm. We've got to supply one for him. You mean a patient? Yeah. We've got to send someone from here who looks like one of this gang into Queen Anne's Hospital with a fatal disease. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, what's that? No, I'm just trying to think of somebody around here with a fatal disease. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be genuine, you fool. Hmm? Oh, of course not. No, we've got to look like one of these. This one's not our mate, Mrs. Hackett. Huh? You know, Mrs. Hackett that comes and cleans out the office. Hmm. 
Yes. Quite a distinct resemblance. Yes, it's like us two pins. See? Well, then, come on, let's get a hold of it. No, don't talk about Mrs. Hackett. Huh? Who are you talking about? <laughs> Doesn't remind me of any... but... <laughs> it's not like me at all. Dead spit. I tell you, I won't do it. There's no oh, good yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. oh, yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. Come on now, what fatal disease would you like? Now, listen. I know my duty as well as anybody, but I will not go into that hospital as a patient, see, and that's absolutely final. Mackenzie is a very old patient of mine, Manners. I'm sure I understand. His condition's extremely grave. Coronary thrombosis, you know. Hopeless owing to his weak state. Then there are the effects of nephritis and other complications. Then it's only a matter of time, surely. Uh, quite. Under the circumstances, I'm going to make a rather special request. Yes? The patient has expressed a special desire that his own medical attendant, Dr. Toomey, might be constantly with him. It's contrary to hospital practice. Yes, yes, I know, but it can only be for a few more days. Well, of course, George, if you insist. Thank you. I was sure you'd be sympathetic. Dr. Toomey. Ah, oh, my dear Sir George. How do you do, Dr. Toomey? This is the house surgeon, Dr. How Manners, do you do? How do you do? and the matron. I've been all arrangements for you to be in attendance, and Dr. Manners and the matron will cooperate. Splendid. If I can help in any special way, Doctor, please let me know. I most certainly will, thank you very much. And how is my patient? <laughs> Uh, coronary thrombosis, you know. Hopeless. There are also the effects of nephritis and other complications. So I believe. Yes, well, uh, I must be going. Um, if I might suggest, Dr. Toomey, I think I should give the patient a slight sedative. His journey seems to have unsettled him. Oh, great. I will certainly. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Sir George. And how is Mr. Mackenzie? Uh, no, 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 mustn't talk, mustn't talk. No, 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 no. I beg your pardon. Is there anything I can do, Doctor? Well, no, not just at the moment, thank you. Oh, I beg your pardon. Nice little piece. Yes, I know, but how long am I likely to be here? Oh, only a few more hours, I hope. Oh, <laughs> get anything for me? Well, you're ill. You don't think I'm going to lie here and starve, do you? Oh, all right. Some people don't think of their stomachs. Yes, and mind you, pop it under the bedclothes if anybody comes. Do you suspect anybody yet? No, give us a chance. Follow me, Doctor. I'll show you your room. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh. <clears throat> Coronary thrombosis, you know. Hopeless. There are also the effects of deflating. Sir George asked yesterday that he should be admitted, I believe. Yes, Doctor. Poor fellow. I'm afraid he'll never leave here alive.
Come here. Yeah, I don't like to look at that doctor. All right, Dr. Manners? Mm. Why? He asked for my card. He took a look at my name and address and said I wouldn't leave here alive. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be bursting with goodwill, does he? Mm. Here, you better lie down. I've just rung for the nurse. Think he's Bradfield? I don't know. But if he is, he'll radio the bridge club tonight, telling him he's got his eye on the right kind of bald-headed corpse. And that's what we're waiting for. Oh, uh, is Dr. Miller still about? He's just starting his round at the hospital. Shall I tell him you want him? No, 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 no. But what time does he finish his rounds? Not till 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? Oh, uh, I wonder if you'd mind drawing the curtains. Is there anything else, Doctor? Uh, no, thank you, my dear. Uh, uh, my dear probationer. Eleven o'clock. The exact time that Bradfield broadcast the other night. What are you going to do? Wait. Come on, shove over. Can I have the sporting page? No, you can't. I wanted to see the results of the Highland Games. Well, they're not in. This is a civilized newspaper. Ah, 11 o'clock. Where are you going? I'm going to take a look at Dr. Manners. Oh? Will you lie down and go on dying? Somebody might come in. And remember, if that nurse comes back, none of your Highland Games. Oh, oh. just uh, finished my rounds. Yes. Thought I'd look in, see if you've gone to bed. <coughs> Will I? I don't like to leave a case of acute coronary thrombosis, you know. Well, the patient's no worse, I hope. Oh, he's very restless, very restless. So there's the after effects of nephritis and other complications. Yes, you mentioned that. What are the other complications exactly? Well, uh, there's his liver, for instance. Is that affected? Oh, yes. Riddled with disease. What's the trouble? Well, didn't Sir George tell you? No. It's very curious. I should have thought he'd mentioned that. Have you ever heard of plutosis? Plutosis? Never. Well, very few people have, as a matter of fact. Anyway, he's got it. It's a tropical disease. Baffled the medical profession in the tropics for years. Tropics? Yes, that's where he picked it. I contracted it, I mean. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll be turning in. Uh, call me if you want me. I most certainly will. Good night. Good night. What did you say I had? Plutosis. Never heard of it. Never have I. Here, you sit tight. I'm going to follow him. Hello. Hello. UF74 calling CG43. I have some good news for you and the family about the garden. I think I can now lay my hands on a suitable species, so we can go ahead with the next few days on another grafting experiment. I suggest we might try it on that tree of yours, which has not borne fruit for four years. You know the one I mean. That's all for the present. Good night. Good night. Dr. Toomey? Hey? Oh, oh, yes. There's a man at the casualty entrance asking for you. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, that'll be one of my favorite patients. His wife's, um, you know, being a nurse. <laughs>
Well, my man. Any results? Yes, he came through with this. When? About ten minutes ago. Anything wrong? No, but... No, there's no need to distress yourself, my man. It's a perfectly natural process. You go home and tell your wife that there's one barn every minute. <laughs> Well, what happened? Oh, we just sat down and read a book. We made a mistake. He's not Bradfield. You sure? Yeah. I just heard from Alf. At the very moment I was watching Manners, Bradfield was on the air, giving another gardening talk, reporting your arrival. Not bad. No, no, we're getting on, but we've got to take it a stage further, that's all. Hmm? What do you mean, a stage further? Well, you'll have to go the whole hog and die. Die? <laughs> I'll do nothing of the sort. But can't you see? It's necessary. Will you kick the bucket? Bradfield will broadcast the news. And then if we keep an eye on everybody that knows the juice snuffed it, well, we're bound to nab him. I won't do it. I'm going home, and with a clear conscience, mark you. Dying doesn't come under my police oath. Where's my trousers? You're going west. You've got colonial thrombosis, tropical plutosis, and arterial complications in the bypass. And you're going west. I won't do it. Now listen to me, for the last time, you're going to die and like it. <laughs> Morning, nurse. Morning, Doctor. Doctor Toomey about yet? I haven't seen him yet. Thank you. May I see the patient's card, please, nurse? Eight. Who recorded this? Dr. Toomey. It is fantastic. A temperature of 108. It's a medical impossibility. Either this is the most extraordinary case that ever entered this hospital, or Dr. Toomey is... Well, never mind. It's a curious thing, nurse. I know Dr. Toomey's face, but I can't place it. Is he familiar to you? Very. Just as I thought. I want to work with you, Toomey. And I regret to say with you too, Sir George. Why, what's the trouble, man? Dr. Toomey here has recorded the patient's temperature as 108. Well? 108, man! Don't you realize how high that is? Well, I... I told you it was a tropical disease. Do you seriously tell me that his temperature was 108? More or less. More or less? More or less? Is this a hospital or a madhouse? I've just examined the patient. Oh, sir? His temperature, pulse, breathing are all absolutely normal. He's as fit as you or I. Well, uh, I'm sorry to have to include you in such an accusation, Sir George. But in my opinion, this is the worst case of medical fraud that has ever been perpetrated on an innocent patient. I'll go even further. Such conduct is not medicine, it's murder. You hit the nail on the head, Doctor. Eh? It's murder, all right. He knows too much, Sir George. I'd better tear off the whiskers. This is Inspector Hornley of Scotland Yard. Hornley? If I'm dead, all right. But what then? Leave the rest to me. Uh -huh. Oh, his pulse is failing. I'm afraid he won't last out the day. I'd better phone the relatives. Oh, 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 he's only got an aunt, and she's in Scotland. I should let her know. Have you got the address? Well, yes, I think so somewhere. Or... Oh, sorry, in my wallet. Yes. Uh, Oh, yes, here we are. Miss McDougall, Kirk Michael Cottage. What's it? I can't remember. Oh, yes, Port William. Uh, she's not on the phone. I think you'd better wear. Very well. You might leave this to the patient for a few minutes. I'll call you. 
Don't you stop blinking like a blinking goat. It's all right, he's in on it. Oh, what's happened? Well, he rumbled. It's all your fault telling me you had a sister with flu and a temperature of 110. Does that mean I don't have to die? It does not. You die tonight at five minutes to eleven precisely. Uh, what's the procedure, Doctor? Well, I shall certify death in the usual way. The matron will then give orders for the body to be removed to the mortuary. The what? It will then be placed on a slab and remain there until the undertakers collect it in the morning. <laughs> Over my dead body. Now, 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 shut up, shut up. Here, Inspector, either this corpse goes home or it resigns. But you're not going to lie down on a job at a time like this. I'm not going to lie down in a slab in a mortuary all night. <laughs> all alone. Well, you won't be alone. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fellow. He died as he lived. An officer and a gentleman. I'll give instructions for the body to be removed to the mortuary. Calling UX74. Very urgent. This is CG43 calling UX74. Very urgent. UX74 here. What is it? This is Anne. We're finished, Jack. The police are here. They're coming up the stairs now, darling. What shall I do? Nothing, Anne. Keep quiet and say nothing. Tell the others to do the same. They haven't a shred of evidence. If you keep your nerve and leave the rest to me, everything will be all right, Anne. Good luck, my darling. Oh, this is Dartmoor calling the radio lever. We've got your number and in case you're thinking of trying any funny business, I've been told to warn you that half the Metropolitan Police are around Queen Anne's Hospital. We've got him. Get the key. You've been very clever. Unfortunately, I visited the old bailey before and I disliked the procedure. There's a balcony outside this room with a hundred feet drop. Go on, break the door now. Go on, go. Come out. On the balcony. You've got to change your shoes, Mr. Bradfield. A nice little spot of Jekyll and Hyde, I must say. Come on, the game's up. Oh, Cut that up!
Come on, hand over. No, 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 Inspector. Always thinking of your stomach. Come on, hand over. Do you know, eh? You shouldn't be surprised if you had a touch of nephritis and uh, other complications. <laughs> Would you like me to take your temperature? I'd like you to sling your hook. With the greatest of pleasure. Oh. I'll leave Nuss Grimshaw to keep you company. Hey, I'm taking my little nurse to the pictures. <laughs> Goodbye, Inspector. Want another dose of that? Yes, come along. Drink it up. Oh. 